The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. And good morning, you're listening to the Big Dog, WIFO FM in Jessa 105.5 on your FM dial, Big Dog Country Radio. Butch Shepard here with you along with Bob Morgan, world famous Butch and Bob show. Brought to you by Nips Car Wash on Highway 301 South, just past McDonald's on the left, and by Murphy Builder Supply, located on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup. It's 8 o'clock. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Enjoyed the baseball game, Wayne County baseball game yesterday, right? It's a good ball game. Good ball game. Well, it is a Tuesday, so it's Tuesdays with Tillery. Senator Blake Tillery is on the phone with us right now, and Bob, take it away with our senator. Yeah, we're glad to have Tuesdays with Tillery. Senator Blake Tillery on the phone with us. Blake, where are you at today? I am actually today sitting in my office. Uh, I know last week we had some connection problems, so I tried to run back here first to remedy those as much as possible. Is all the snow out of Atlanta, or do you still have snow? No, it's rain on the ground this morning. It took about 90 minutes to travel six miles, so uh, <laughs> makes us makes us really miss South Georgia. I thought yeah. that was typical in Atlanta anyway, without rain. <laughs> <laughs> it might, might be. Again, it's... Uh, Another reason why I love where we're from. There you go. Well, tell us the update. Uh, we talked to Stephen Meeks yesterday. He said that uh, the legislators are kind of off doing their thing, looking at the budget. They're going to come back on the 18th and try to remedy the situation. But it seems to be a lot of dissension, a lot of difference of opinion. So tell us what's going on. Yeah, that's, that's probably a fair assessment of that, <laughs> Stephen, uh, Representative Meeks. <laughs> As Representative Meeks probably told you yesterday, we're on a 12-day Sort of pause. It isn't really a break. Um, many meetings going on. I'll, I'll run you through what's going on today here in just a second. It's a little bit unprecedented to have a break like this. We normally take a break in the second week for four days, five days, and go over uh, the budget. Then we we did that this year. And now we're taking a, a, a second twelve day pause. And I think it kind of the big question is goes back to why. That's what people are asking back home. I've told you guys back in December when we started talking of the exit issues and other things that our budget was predicated upon a 2.3% growth. Most of that growth was in education and in Medicaid. Um, and the problem we've had until really even including this month, that we've only grown at about a 0.1%, 0.2% uh, until this month. So February's numbers came in yesterday. Those provide a little bit of, a, of, a, of light at the end of the tunnel, possibly. Income uh, tax collections were up 4.3 percent, about 56 million. Sales tax was up 4.8 percent, about another 56 million. Corporate income tax was up 28 percent, which is about 50 million. Motor fuel was up 6.3 percent, 9.2 million. Down on TAVT, remember we changed the tag tax about three or four years ago where you don't pay that birthday tax every year. You pay a tag tax one time when you, when you buy a vehicle. Uh, that, so that costs us about $13 million. The overall, what that ramp rounds out to be, when you take the pluses and the additions on some other things that I didn't run through all the numbers with you, we're up about $100 million over January. So for February's numbers is what we would call those. January's numbers were up about $100 million or 4.5%. But if you put that into um, the timeline with how poorly we did the first seven months of the, or six months of the uh, fiscal year, uh, we're still only growing at 0.9%. And as I told you, my first line to you this morning, the budget's predicated upon 2.3%. So we're still $300 million under budget, even after a really good February. Why that concerns me so much is, is I know April's numbers last year were up $400 million. So if we're going to have a growth over April's numbers of last year, we have to have a, a, a plus $400 million month, um, which which I don't know that we'll see. So that's why we're having these sort of 12-day calls to go back through and, and to really readdress some of the budget questions we've already asked, ask for some clarity on some numbers from department heads. Uh, and that's what's going on today. As I asked Stephen, you know, is the problem is, you know, like I said, the governor wants these cuts, but a lot of department heads are pushing back saying they can't afford the cuts. And one I read yesterday, one department that says they need money and can't afford to cut is the criminal justice department so tell us about that yeah well that's 
several different departments in one. So you're going to have the public defenders who say if we cut their budget that we're subject to a federal lawsuit. Um, you're going to have different things in Governor Deal's criminal justice reform uh, that, that say, you know, if we take money out of these areas that we're essentially re- uh, destroying Governor Deal's legacy. Um, I, I don't know that, you know, it's kind of like uh, in your own household, if you started to cut back on allowances or going out to eat, I'm sure your family uh, members wouldn't enjoy that. But, but that's what we're called to do. We're called to be the adults in the room. Um, revenues aren't where they were projected to be, and I've committed that I don't intend to go back to the citizens of Georgia and ask for more money from them. Uh, remember, the, the government doesn't create money. We take it out of your pockets and put it in the government coffers. Um, I, I, as a conservative, I have a trend and a, uh, a track record of doing the opposite, of trying to return that money to you. And I think that's where, really where the legislature stands right now. We're not willing to go back and ask for more. Now, if it's taxes that people are supposed to have been paying, i.e. Um, income income tax through uh, sales on the Internet, et cetera, um, that, that's an equalization with a brick-and-mortar store. If you're having to pay it downtown at David's in Jessup, but you don't have to pay it online at Amazon, well, that's not fair to David's. So there's a difference there, and there may be some room we can make up on that, but, again, as this budget hole continues to grow, we're going to have to decide what, what's the proper role of government. And some of the things that we may have liked doing in the past uh, we may not be able to do, or at least not do the same way we did before. And if you just joined us, State Senator Blake Tillery on the phone with us Tuesdays with Tillery. You know, reading uh, reports from Atlanta, it seems to be a lot of dissension right now between the high speaker and the governor. Is it as bad as they're reporting it, or is that just being overblown? Uh, you know, well, I'm in the Senate, so I, I can't speak as to what's going on in the House as well as maybe uh, Representative Workhouse or Representative Meeks. I'll tell you, on the Senate side, we're not really trying to have a fight with anybody. We're trying to make sure we're spending people's taxpayer dollars wisely. Uh, so that's why, again, while we're not in session, I'm, I'm up here today. We've got three subcommittee meetings today that will be probably a little more um, pointed than they were last year. This year, the, the committee meetings, were, were, we're asking harder questions, questions that we probably should have been asking two or three years ago about core missions, uh, about if we move these funds, how does it affect your federal funding if you do get federal funding, um, about the growth over time. A lot of times we'll add things into a budget and never go back and take it out if that program didn't work. Um, again, the people of the state of Georgia deserve better and, and really demand better than that. Um, the subcommittees today that we're going to have are going to be judicial, agricultural and transportation. So you're talking there several billion dollars uh, that the Senate's going to be going through today just uh, looking and making sure we're being uh, effective and efficient with taxpayer dollars. I go back to the eggs and issues breakfast here in Wayne County and you and Bill Workheiser and Stephen were there and a big discussion was about broadband. I talked to Stephen yesterday. He said there is some work being done on it, but you don't really read much about it or hear much about it when you look on the Georgia legislative website. So tell us where we are in broadband and what kind of discussions are taking place. Yeah, well, and that brings up a couple of points. Let's go back first to the budget. One of my concerns was there's a something that the Senate and the House ag- had agreed upon uh, to put in the budget concerning broadband mapping. One of the things that we learned when we looked at our federal maps is that if any home in a census tract was covered with broadband, had, had 10 three service, in other, in other words, 10 megabytes up and or 10 megabytes down and three megabytes up um they would con- that whole census tract would be considered served well everything north of 341 in wayne county i think there's only two census tracts north of 341 and you guys know how big an area that is if you're only serving one home you could be serving that home in oak island which that's not helping anybody in Odal. um so we had to get true with our with our mapping, and the Senate included some money in to, to, to true up that mapping. That was one of the cuts that's been proposed so far. Now, that, that's one of the cuts that I really do think we need to put back in the, in the budget, and I'll, I'll be working on that. Um, a lot of the other broadband movement has been some of our partnerships with the federal uh, government. Sonny Perdue, our former governor, the Secretary of Agriculture, is in charge of a massive pot of money that the federal government is, is pushing into broadband. 
Uh, as you know, we passed some legislation last year to allow the EMCs to get involved with that. I know Satilla is still um, trying to weigh out how that affects them and their and their ability to provide electricity, which, again, is their core mission. Uh, we've had Altima Hall EMC, which is just northwest of, of uh, Satilla, decide they do want to play in that game. They're jumping into the, the broadband market. Uh, we've also had a Canucci, which is straight north and maybe a little bit northeast of Satilla, that's decided they do not want to be. They, they don't think it's a risk they're worth for them to take. You're going to hear an announcement in the next two weeks where Sonny Purdue or Governor Purdue, now Secretary Purdue, is going to come down to Evans County and award one of those grants. So Pembroke Telephone provides part of the broadband uh, services to East Evans County. They're going to be coming down and announcing that. I am very hopeful that you're going to see, hopefully Austin Hall, and if Satilla gets involved in them as well, um, be awarded in the next round, which we do expect in the next nine months. Uh, so that's another sex, uh, segment of broadband that's, that's kind of going on at the same time, not exact, not directly affecting us or d- directly affected by the legislature, but sort of put in place. So our direct effect is that mapping that I'm going to have a close eye on as we move through this budget process. Okay, Blake, again, always glad to have you on Tuesdays. Again, if anybody's listening and wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do that? Best way is always... Uh, Cell phone or email, email up here does come straight to my phone, blake.tillery at senate.ga.gov. Some folks send it to other phone, other ways. I, I have it right to me. And then my cell phone number is still 912-245-9915. Uh, we do have something kind of fun on, on tap today that I think your listeners would love to hear. We're, we're going to be dedicating the new judicial building. And the person on tap to speak for that is, is Justice Clarence Thomas. Uh, we all know him because he grew up 60 miles away over in Pinpoint, uh, African-American, conservative, uh, just a, a true uh, constitutional conservative whose opinions I love reading and look forward to spending a little bit of time with him today in the middle of this chaos. Okay. Well, good. Appreciate you calling in. Again, we'll talk to you next Tuesday. Thank you, guys. Have a good morning. Okay. Thank you, Blake. Appreciate it very much. Bye-bye. WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, world famous Butch and Bob show, 11 minutes after 8 o'clock. We've got guests in the green room. They'll be on the air with us in 90 seconds. Here's your WIFO forecast. Hi, good morning. Partly sunny, south breeze, highs mid 70s, becoming mostly cloudy tonight. 20% chance of showers after midnight, low 60. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Slight chance of showers and thunderstorms in the morning, then a chance of showers in the afternoon, highs upper 70s. Wednesday, mostly cloudy, slight chance of showers upper 70s. Thursday, showers, chance of thunderstorms. Georgia meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. Neesmith Chevrolet and the Wayne County Board of Tourism present Hog Jam 2020, February 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Entry fee, $50 per bow or gun hunter. Children under 16 hunt free with a registered adult bow or gun hunter. Tournament hours run from Friday the 21st, 2 p.m. until Sunday, February 23rd at noon. $4,000 guaranteed payout. Prizes, gun and bow, first place $1,000, second $500, third $250. Bonus category, biggest hog weighed in by 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday night. $100 bow and gun each night. The biggest hog killed by a hunter under 16, $100. Biggest hog killed by a female, $250. Payout based upon number of entries. You can hunt Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, or Tennessee where you have legal permission to hunt. For rules and more info, go to waynetourism.com or call 912-427-3233. Registration deadline, February 22nd, 6 p.m. Neesmith Chevrolet and the Wayne County Board of Tourism present Hog Jam 2020, February 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. (laughs) <laughs> Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO 105.5 FM in Jezebel, famous Butch and Bob show. And, Bob, we continue with our show. we got four guests in here this morning. Yeah, we got the chamber in here today. Miss Dina Bennett's brought some guests. they got several events coming up. One's coming up Thursday, State of Education, and they got the Taste of Wayne. So you're here to talk about both? Yes, sir. Uh, I am. We do have our State of Education um, luncheon on Thursday of this week at the college at 1130. We do still have some seats available for that if anybody um, wants to come and hadn't registered. We do have um, some seats available, so give us a call today and get registered for that event. That is um, one of our quarterly membership luncheons that's sponsored by Ray and Ear. Um, always nice to hear what's going on in our community with education. So we've got a representative from the college coming. 
Um, we've got uh, someone, well, Dr. Brenton will be there with superintendent's office, and then we've got Sherry Bowen with uh, Solid Rock Christian Academy to share with us what they have going on over there as well. Um, that event is sponsored by Georgia Power, but also Marshland Credit Union. We will be, um, they're sponsoring our page star student and star teacher recognition. So we'll be doing that as well on Thursday. We'll announce and recognize uh, those winners during the event. And then Taste of Wayne in March. Taste of Wayne is right around the corner. Yes, sir. It's scheduled for Thursday, March the 5th from 6 to 9 p.m. And tickets are on sale now for that event. And just in case people don't know, because we have new listeners new all the time, what is Taste of Wayne? Alan. The Taste of Wayne, is, good morning. Uh, the Taste of Wayne is a celebration of our, our restaurants and the community. We want to uh, give people opportunities to try what they have to offer, and uh, maybe they'll start uh, visiting those restaurants. So they, uh, some of them come up with traditional stuff. Some of them come up with new ideas just to kind of uh, liven it up a little bit. But uh, we're looking forward to a great, uh, a great uh, night. In fact, our, uh, our participating restaurants are B-Max Restaurant, uh, Cafe Euro, Gooey's Pizza, Heart's Desire Bakery, Hog and Bones, uh, JJ's Place, Jersey Mike Subs, Nang's Thai Restaurant, Oishi Japanese Restaurant, One Love Island and Soul Food, Pages Pound Cakes, Southern Weddings and Country Flowers, and the Strand Bistro and the Smoke Show. Okay, those so, are the restaurants set up already yep. for Taste of Wayne. Yep, uh, we're... we're uh, We've run out of spaces for restaurants, so, so those will be the participating uh, folks. Okay. And we look forward to seeing uh, what they have to offer. Okay. So, uh, uh, Dina, why don't you paint a picture of someone. If they're walking into the, where's it going to be held, the Polytech? Yes. The Polytech Center at, uh, at the college. Uh, paint a picture of why people will see and what they'll do when they go into Taste of Wayne. Okay. When you first enter the Polytech Center, we'll have some tables set up there for registration so or check-in, basically. We don't do paper tickets for this event. Um, you just come in, and, and uh, we'll have a list of everybody who is registered for the event. So you check in. Um, as you move forward in down the hallway there, um, we'll have our live auction items set out on tables, and um, the auction opens opens up pretty much as soon as the event starts at 6. Live auction or uh, That'll be the auction. silent auction. Silent auction yes. set up all around where people can write right. down their bids. Out in the hallway area, out in okay. the student center actually is where it'll be set up. We'll have roughly about 120 items. Um, those items will be displayed with a description and they'll have a, um, a bid form in front of each of them so the bidding can begin as soon as you come in. Inside the main area of the... Um, and the venue will be where our restaurants are set up. So we'll have those tables set up around the perimeter of the room. They're around the perimeter with their tables and their That's signs right. and all that and the owners and chefs and managers and everything, right? That's exactly okay. right. Um, and they are responsible for decorating their 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 booths or their station. That is part of one of the awards that we give out every year is basically for the best tablescape. So how they present, how they set up their uh, booths. So it's always nice to see some of them go with a traditional uh, decor. Some of them will um, will go along with the theme that we have set up, which this year is fire and ice. So this year when you walk in the room, if you're facing the stage, um, one half of the room will be fire and one half will be ice so okay. we've got a uh, decor set up appropriately for that and um, the restaurants have gotten to choose which side they want to be okay. at so they can decorate and then in the middle of the room we'll have um, about 20 high top tables just kind of standing um, uh, no seated uh, room inside the uh, main venue there, but there'll be room for, you know, networking, standing around, tasting. The high top tables are for do that, and also when you eat, you can put your... Yes. your it's kind of hard to eat with a plate and a cup. That's right. Open, you know, That's right. It'll be room. And so you have a place mm -hmm. to sit it down and, and uh, to talk and eat. That's exactly right. We'll have two bars set up inside uh, the main venue room there, um, serving beer and wine. 
And then, um, of course, that will be where the uh, award ceremony is held and uh, the live auction. So you'll have a live auction. How many items do you have for live auction uh, so we'll, far this year? We'll probably have, we'll end up with about 12 or 14. Okay. So, so yes. lots and lots of silent auction and then several uh, live auction That's items. Right. Any entertainment this year? We are not going to have entertainment. We're no gonna, background music? We may have some background music playing, yes. Okay. But we have in the past, we've had an entertainment sponsor. Right. And um, we've just kind of... Uh, Taking a look at that the last couple of years, Alan's and not singing. Alan is not singing. Thank goodness. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> but we just don't feel like that that you're getting your money's your, worth. Your, your your money's worth, right? Yeah. You're, and so we uh, took that sponsorship and changed it over to our award ceremony. So we're going to really um, step up our award part of the program um we've getting some new different awards this year um so um we're looking forward to, to that being a little you know a little yeah. more highlighted during the program so yeah. i definitely have some sort of background music to fill in the yes space. yes okay and it's so loud in there anyway it's kind of hard to hear mm -hmm. you know unless you've got like a full-on band going and you get everybody to stop and there's just so much going on during the night that you don't really have a a time to just stop and focus yeah. on a band. How much, how much are tickets to Taste of Wayne? $50 for members, chamber members, and $75 for guests. So $50 individual chamber members, That's 75 right. for non-chamber, and they're available at the Chamber of Commerce, right? They are, or Wayne on County our website. Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, That's on right. Plum Street. That's right. And um, go we, ahead. We have a uh, raffle also this year. Uh, the tickets are $10 per ticket. And the uh, raffle is a chance to win. Uh, first prize is $1,000 cash. Uh, second prize is $750 cash. Third prize is $500 cash. And fourth prize is $250 cash. So and you can I, buy as many raffle tickets as you want? You sure can. You sure can, huh? And how and, much are they once again? Uh, $10 each. Okay. And we'll be drawn the night of the uh, Taste of Wayne. Yeah. Although you do, do not have to be there to uh, win. So, uh, you know, chance to win to, some good money there. That's great money. Great right. money. That raffle was sponsored by Country Financial. Um, we have we appreciate Sean putting the money up. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we do appreciate Sean. He does a lot for uh, the chamber and for our community. So, he is sponsoring our, our raffle this year. We have raffle tickets available at the chamber. Uh, Sean and his crew also have some tickets at his office. Um, and you'll be got, selling them all evening long there. That's right. During the event as well. That's right. Our ambassadors got have tickets. They're floating all around town with tickets. So, um, give us a call and we'll point you in the right direction on how to get tickets. Once again, the, uh, the date of Taste of Wayne is? March the 5th, Thursday, March the 5th, from okay. 6 to 9. We've got a couple other guests here. Who do we have? We do. So this year's presenting sponsor um, for our event is the Heritage Bank. Okay. And um, so we brought them a couple of representatives along with us this morning just to share a little bit. Last year, uh, last year, last week they were here and, and mentioned some um, things they have going on there at the bank. So yeah, Cindy, they got facelift going on down there. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, good morning. Introduce yourself. Good morning. I'm Cindy Thornton. I'm the branch manager for the Jessup um, office, and we are excited about our um, new look that we've got going on. So we'd like to welcome all of Wayne County um, to come and look at us once we're done. Um, and we are excited about being the corporate sponsor this year for Taste of Wayne. Okay, Heritage Bank in, in Jessup mm -hmm. and surrounding areas. That's right. And um, so why the facelift down there at Heritage Bank? I was riding by the other day and saw all the scaffolding and so forth. So <laughs> um, is it a new look or what? It's a new look inside and out. We're very excited about it. Um, and it's going to look really good. And we'd like to welcome everyone to come and see it once we're finished. Um, hopefully here soon in the next few weeks. Um, so we're pretty excited about it. It's looking good so far. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. let's move the mic on around to your... No, <laughs> she's just here. She's my backup. She's yeah. just here for moral support, huh? Yes, this well, is... Well, just tell us who it is. This is Paige Evers. She's our assistant branch manager. Um, Paige, you can't be shy. We, it's just talking. We love um, our community, and we welcome everyone to come see us. And um, and where is Heritage Bank located? It in is located in two, uh, 292 South Macon Street. Um, right there at Orange Street. Right there at Orange Street, and we have a lot of action around that town, that side of town. So come and see us and look at our new remodel. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So I will get in trouble if I don't mention a few of our okay. other sponsors. Well, so let Eddie, me please do that. I know, I know. It doesn't take much for me. So again, uh, we thank the Heritage Bank for being here with us and being our presenting sponsor. Um, I mentioned the raffle sponsor um, being Country Financial. Our live auction sponsor is Prime South Bank. Our silent auction sponsor is Hospice of South Georgia. Our award ceremony sponsor is Interstate Credit Union. And then we have a wine toss um, again this year that's sponsored by Murphy Builder Supply. Wine toss. Tell wine me about toss. that. So we have, we'll have bottles of wine set up. We'll have a little section set up and they'll be at different levels and different size bottles and that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So you'll get the little plastic rings like you see at the uh, carnivals and right. such and you'll actually toss to try to ring if a bottle ring of wine. If wine. you win it, you, if you ring, ring it, it, you win it. Win it. Yes. All right. Yes. So there'll ring be, it, win it. That's right. That's right. So um, we did that last year and a lot of folks had a, good, a lot of good time with that. So um, each guest will leave there with a um, stemless wine glass. Um, our toast sponsor this year is uh, Marshland Credit Union. Um, so everybody will get a glass. I'll let Alan tell you our corporate sponsors. All right, Alan. Our corporate sponsors are uh, Wayne County Industrial Development Authority, Apple, Apple Care uh, LLC, Coastal Medical Equipment and Uniforms, EAM Corporation, First Southern Bank, Georgia Dermatology and Skin Care Center, Georgia Power Company, GHC Hospice, Historic Strand Jessup Drive-In, Overholt General Contractors, Partners Risk Services, Southern Ionics Minerals, LLC, Wayne Obstetrics, and OBGYN. (laughs) Okay. Way to go, Alan. That's what I do. We do still have some... um, there's still time to sponsor if anyone would like to be a business sponsor at the $250 level or a corporate sponsor, which is $500. Um, both of those uh, levels get free tickets to the event, some additional advertising um, from now and and during the event and um, post-event advertising as well. And then, as always, we're looking for auction items. So any of our businesses that would like to uh, donate to our auction will gladly take those items as well. Okay. So donate those items to the chamber so they can keep a uh, business moving here That's right. in Jessup Wayne County. That's right. All right. And um, let's see here. Bob, you have further questions for our guest this morning from the Chamber of Commerce on Taste of Wayne? Uh, no, I just want to go back to the state of education then. Talk a little bit about that. Okay. You know, about the page. You know, talk about the next to Julie Mitch. They're going to recognize the student and teacher of the year, right? That's right. That's right. Each year, the um, high school, each high school, the high schools in our area or throughout Georgia, they uh, recognize or choose a page star student, and the student gets to choose their star teacher. And um, so we will um, recognize that student and teacher during our event on Thursday. Um, that student and teacher gets the opportunity to go on to a regional event and and then again to the state level. So um, we, we support that program all the way through. So we'll send them to the region and the state um, recognition programs that they have as well. It's Thursday. Yes, yeah. Thursday, 1130. Okay. And we do have some tickets available. I do have one more question on Taste of Wayne. You know, everybody says, well, watch the, watch the dress attire. You know, I know Legacy, it's uh, kind of dinner, it's uh, more dressed up. What's the, the, the proper dress attire for Taste of Wayne? Don't look to Alan. You don't. <laughs> something that looks like fire or something that looks, <laughs> looks like, like ice. ice. <laughs> so That's we, the theme this year, folks, so of the Taste of Wayne I tell folks, ice. of course... Come as you are. We we um. It's pretty casual. We, it can be. It we is do. a casual event. It is more casual Not than legacy. But no, you don't have we to dress say, up in a suit or anything. We or say a business dress. dressy to semi formal. So we'll have some that come mm-hmm. straight from work and they're in you right. know slacks and and top, and then we have some that you know pull out the stop. So mm-hmm. okay. We just so Alan, how are you dressing this year? Fire or ice? I'm going cool. <laughs> so you're going to be cool up top and fire on the bottom or cool my wife bottom will, fire on top? My wife will be hot. I'll be cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smart man. Let me tell you. She has trained Val- him well. Yeah, you can tell it's Valentine's week. He's already- <laughs> That's right. He's already in full form. <laughs> oh, boy.
boy. All right, so get your uh, tickets for Taste of Wayne at the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce on Plum Street. That's right. $50 individual for members, 75 for non-members. So I've been several times, and folks, it is an evening that you will thoroughly enjoy. We will share next week when we come back on Tuesday some of our auction items that we have... Um started receiving already so we'll give a little sneak peek into that next week you get to go around the edges of the of the, of the room there and get food from every one of those restaurants and in, in taste so i basically say you walk in but you waddle out that's true <laughs> this is true and you have each uh, guest has the opportunity to vote for their um their favorite yeah, let's talk about that what are the so, awards going to be given this year for yes. taste of waiting for the restaurants so I knew you would ask, and I don't have that. We'll you have, don't to, have that several we'll, awards. We'll, yes, we'll reveal. We have changed um, the names of the awards this year, uh-huh. but I can kind of tell you we'll have um, a, a most unique um, or original um, cuisine that will be one of the awards. Okay. Um, the appearance, uh, not just the tablescape of decor, but the way they present the food mm-hmm. um, is one of the awards. Um, of course, the judges will have their choice, and then we do people's choice. We've got six awards total this year. Um, mm-hmm. Each guest will receive a coin as they enter, and then all of the booths will have a box. Mm-hmm. So for you to, after you've tasted, you get to go back and, right. and vote on your favorite. Okay, sounds good. Well, we look forward to having y'all back here yes. next week to talk about Taste of Wayne Thank and other things us. going on with the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce. Alan, behave all week, okay? I'll do my best. You'll try? <laughs> Heritage Bank, glad y'all came in, and congratulations on the um, on the remodeling down there. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. Yeah, all right. Good. World Famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by... Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South in Jessup, just past McDonald's there on the left-hand side, and by Murphy Builder Supply, where the builders buy, located on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup, down from the Big Red Caboose. The world-famous Butch and Bob Show.